Genre flicks are awesome. Westerns, dramas, horror, musicals, comedies, sci-fi. There's something for everyone. But after a while, the tropes get old and the audiences get bored. So what do you do? Well, you take those genre stereotypes and pump them full of steroids. Push it to the limit! And that's what Robert Altridge did in 1955 with Mickey Spillane's Kiss Me Deadly. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world. All you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimbo. Cloris Leachman is seen running down the road with nothing on but a trench coat. Mike Hammer almost hits her and decides to pick her up. Nat King Cole's I'd Rather Have the Blues plays as the credits roll down the screen, backwards. This is very cool. Kind of like the opening scene of Star Wars. You were out with some guy who thought no was a three-letter word. They hit a roadblock. The police are looking for a woman who's escaped the asylum. They play a married couple and get by. Christina, the name of the girl, wants to mail a letter and does. If we don't make that bus stop, remember me, she tells Mike. A car runs them off the road and she is later tortured to death at an apartment. All the camera shows are her feet, but we hear her desperate cries. They are put in Mike's car and pushed down a cliff and it catches fire. But Mike survives. That opening is sure a rough one. But that's what this film does best. It takes the conventions of noir storytelling and pushes them to their max. Like with Ralph Meeker's character, Mike. He's the brute, no-holds-barred P.I. we all love. But he's also the lowest level of P.I. Gathering pictures of men in bed with women for divorce proceedings. He's a bedroom dick. When he gets his P.I. license and gun permit revoked, he doesn't care. He continues the case. When confronted physically, he handles men expertly with his fist. A man tries to tail him and pull a knife on Mike. Mike throws popcorn in his face, makes him drop it, punches him, slams his head against the wall, and tosses him down the stairs for good measure, even smiling about it when he walks away. In another scene, Mike goes to a dressing room to change, and two men try to take him. Mike knocks one out quickly and the other flees, gaining some admiration from their underworld boss in the process. And like every P.I., Mike is a ladies' man. He's got his trusted assistant and main squeeze, Velda. She helps with the men in the divorce proceedings. Velda loves and wants him bad, but he's got other options. At one point, just as Mike arrives at a pool party, a woman walks right up to him and starts making out. Seconds, she says, and they go at it again. The sexuality is through the roof and wide open now. Even Christina's old roommate comes on to him. Mike's loyal to his friends too, like Nick the Mechanic. Nick is quite the character, always animated and saying va va voom One morning, Nick tries to start a car given to Mike by the bad dudes. Mike stops him, noting the bombs wired to the starter and the speedometer. He even offers the car to Nick to find out who did it. But every man has a self-loathing side too. When Nick gets a car lowered on top of him for asking questions, it sends Mike into a fit of self-pity and he loses his edge for a bit. And hold on, because I don't want to give everything away, but I've got to talk about the MacGuffin. You know how in Pulp Fiction, there is the briefcase with light emitting from it? Or even in Repo Man, 
with the green light coming from the trunk? Well, this is the inspiration. At one point, Mike locates a locker. In that locker is a case. The case is hot as hell. Mike opens it a bit and heavy wind and light emit from it and blow from it and it burns him very badly. This thing is dangerous. And by the end, we sense that this thing has the power to obliterate everyone and everything into oblivion. Now that is a movie. To end on, this movie has it all. Sex, violence, nuclear holocaust. What more could you ask for? And the director, Robert Aldrich, was one of the first exploitation directors, in my opinion, bringing every genre of movie to the extent that the Hays Code would allow him. He even invented hagsploitation, a genre where you take old female stars and turn them into murderous witches. Check out Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte if you don't believe me. I also wanted to mention Juano Hernandez, an incredible actor who has a very small part in this film. He's really wonderful in Intruder in the Dust as well.